How's it digging my shovels? This is Bait here and today I got another rarely used tier battle for you but this time I tweaked my team a bit and I decided to replace the Clefable Ball with a Spirit Tomb. Kind of inspired by the previous match where I faced a uh, rest talking calm mind mono attacking Spirit Tomb. I really thought that that would kind of fix the couple problems that this team has and uh, yeah the two major threats that this team indeed has are uh, Sigilev with cosmic power and then a sub calm mining Yuxi. And uh, this kind of spirit tomb could definitely take on both of those things. And I do end up losing the heal bell support from Clefable, but then again, now that I have spirit tomb and Hariyama, I got a couple of status absorbers. And then I also lose the wish support, but at the same time, I do have a regenerator core. Even though Clefable support was appreciated, it is something that I can still give up. So that is what I got going on right now. But I uh, got a match here against Gold Guy 12. Uh, Feralig Feraligator is probably the biggest threat that I'm seeing at his team and for this match I decided to lead with Hariyama as usual especially since he was most likely going to lead with his Aerodactyl to set up uh, Stealth Rocks and then just go from there and that is indeed what happens and uh, since he does resist the Fake Out I figured I would just go straight for the Ice Punch because that's gonna definitely bring him down either to his Sash or then just to a range where I can uh, just go for the Bullet Punch on the following turn and uh, he does end up living with uh, 35 HP, but yeah, like I said, I can just go for the bullet punch. He doesn't see it coming, or then he just decided to stay in for whatever reason. Most likely he didn't see it coming, because bullet punch is kind of a random move on Hariyama. And Hariyama itself is kind of random in RU, it's kind of dropping down to the NU at the moment. But anyways, rambling, moving on, in comes the uh, Medicham. So I got a couple options, either go into my uh, Slow King to resist his dual stab, or then just go into Spirit Tomb to be completely immune to his dual stab. And he does go for the Psycho Cut. So I decided to go for the Calm Mind here, because, well, Dark Pulse without any boosts wouldn't really do too much, and I figured, you know, might as well go for it and see where that gets me. But he goes into his Entei, and I know a Bandit Flare Blitz is just going to, uh do a bunch of damage and even my max defense, max HP Spiritum doesn't really enjoy taking a hit and I could take this opportunity to go into my Kapu tops and then just get off the rapid spin because now that his uh, Aerodactyl is gone that means that uh, he won't be able to uh, reset his uh, Stealth Rocks on the field so I am going to have a Stealth Rock 3 battle here which is nice for the rest of the game so yeah that is indeed what I am going to proceed to do as he goes into the Alligator and this is kind of scary because I'm not really sure what kind of set he is. Is this a uh, Gator time with Sword Dance or then is this just DD or whatever it is. But it does turn out that it is Sword Dance as I go into my Among Us. And the problem is I don't know what he has for coverage. Either Crunch or the Ice Punch. I just decided to stay in and uh, hopefully live a hit. And it does turn out he does uh, have the uh, uh, Crunch. So Among Us actually does decide to... <laughs> well, it does decide to uh, still live ahead because it does have the good natural bulk and I am able to retaliate with my Giga Drain, also life or boost it, so I get to take him out with that and then he decides to go into his table and I was just thinking this is some sort of defensive set so I should be able to take a hit and put him to sleep but it, it actually turns out that he is packing the double edge and with the stab he is actually able to take me out from this range so I was kind of thinking is this like a more offensive uh, Life Orb said, but then he actually reveals that he has Protect as I go into my Hariyama, but whatever the case is, something is going to get smashed by a, a, a close combat, so that is what I'm going to go for, and he goes into his Medicham to uh, resist the hit, but uh, yeah, one does not simply resist a close combat. So it ends up doing, even though the resistance, it ends up doing like, what, 85% to him, and here I really thought that the uh, Bullet Punch was too obvious, so I des uh, decided to switch out and go into Slow King, because even if he goes for his dual stat move, I could take that, but he actually predicts the Slow King to come in, so I'm not really sure why he wasn't predicting the obvious bullet punch at all, but it ends up working out for him regardless, and uh, luckily though, I was able to rabbit spin away the rocks, so Slow King still manages to hang on there, and with the regenerator, I can still, you know, get my health back. And now that I know he's locked into Thunder Punch, I can go safely into uh, Nido Queen and just set up my Stealth Rocks. And it definitely looks like he is most likely a Choice Bandit because that just did way too much damage. Even even for Scar even a Scarfer wouldn't be able to do that much to a Slow King. 
with a uh, non-stab move, which obviously Slowking would otherwise resist. So Rambling moving on, and comes the Clefable again. So what I'm going to do is just go into my Spiritomb, because the only attack he has shown so far is the uh, Double Edge, but now he does show that he also has the, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, Flamethrower. But I can still take that pretty easily, so no problem. So now what I decided to do is go into my Slowking to just get the Regenerator going on. But he goes for the Wish again, and I was kind of, uh, already earlier, I was, uh, I went for the Dark Pulse because I was thinking he would want to go into Medicham to pass the Wish, and I decided to go for the Scald here with Slowking. Because again, I was thinking he would want to pass the Wish into his Medicham, but he actually just ends up going for the Double Edge, which I still end up living with 4 HP. But, uh, yeah, I, I still cannot say, and even though I did get the burn, which is nice, because now his double edge's power will be cut in half, but still I cannot take a hit from that range with Slowking, so I'm just gonna go into Spirit Tomb, which can take any hit from this uh, Clefable, and then just proceed to set up Calm Minds, and uh, set up all over his face, so that is what I'm just going to, uh, indeed proceed to do, as he now switches into his uh, Medicham, which is kind of interesting, because... Uh, yeah, I've been trying to catch this thing off guard when he's been trying to pass those wishes, but now he goes directly into it. And I'm like, well, I resist his draw. Well, I'm immune to his draw stab again. And the worst thing he can do is like Thunder Punch. So I wanted to just kind of scout how much he would do to me. And then I decided to go for the rest. But it turns out even better because he was predicting like some sort of switch. But obviously, I had no reason to switch out. So I'm a freaking spirit room. So I end up getting my free rest and uh, sleep talk here as he goes back into his Clefable because he's obviously choiced and locked into Psycho Cut. And uh, Dark Pulse actually does do a decent chunk and it actually turns out that he's not even running leftovers. So I'm guessing he might still have like Life Warp because he's packing that double edge and that did do a lot of damage to my uh, to my Among Us earlier on. But uh, sleep talk roulette continues. I end up getting the, uh, getting the uh, Dark Pulse again. And this time I decided to go for the uh, Calm Mind because I was thinking he would want to just stay in because all this time I've been trying to catch this thing off guard with uh, Dark Pulses and Skulls. But this time he does make the Wish Pass to his Medicham and I'm like, wow. But it still doesn't really matter too much because I'm like all set up here and there isn't much that he can do to stop me because I have all these Calm Minds up. So just gonna go for the Dark Pulse here because I was kind of thinking he may want to stay in but he makes the smart move and sacks his uh, Clefable now, and then he go then he's gonna go into his Entei, and I know this Flare Blitz is going to do a lot, it's gonna hurt, but I can still take him out, especially coupled with the uh, Stealth Rocks the stealth rocks damage and the uh, Flare Blitz recoil, so Dark Pulse will be an easy KO, although it does kind of bring me down to a revengeable range for his uh, Medicham, for example. So, yeah, uh, but he actually decides to go into his... Uh, uh, I was gonna say Agiruda, but Exelgor, yeah, that's the ninja bug. And I was kind of thinking I could be able to live this hit, since I have all the Calm Minds up, and he's obviously a special attacker. He does end up getting a crit, but he, it is still a stab and life for hit. But still, like, it isn't too big of a deal, because uh, the uh, Spirit Tomb was able to cripple the majority of his team, and now Hariyama and friends should be able to clean up here, so just... Speaking of Harry, I'm gonna bring it in and just go for the Fake Out Bullet Punch combination attack and uh, take out the Exelgor. And now his last Pokemon will be the uh, Medicham. And I'm just gonna go into Sloking, use it kind of as a pivot switch, see what he's going to lock himself into. Doesn't really matter what he locks himself into, I still have an answer for any move that he's going to do here, essentially. And uh, yeah, he goes for the Psycho Cut. As I go into Sloking, I still end up living with that, so what I decided to do. Just in case I need Slowking to take one more hit from this thing, what I decided to do, decided to do is go into Nidoqueen as a Death Porter instead, because Nidoqueen is obviously not going to be doing anything against many champs that can just outspeed and uh, take it out. So just gonna sack Nidoqueen instead of Slowking, and uh, yeah, then just go into my Hariyama and go for the Fake Out followed by a Bullet Punch. But it's Kind of looking iffy. Maybe if I get the max damage, then maybe I might be able to take out the Medicham with his uh, followed uh, Bullet Punch. But he still ends up living with 16 HP, and he's gonna be able to take me out with the uh, with the Psycho Cut. Uh, but I do still have the uh, Caputops and also the Floating to take one hit. But obviously Caputops is 
more reliable since there's always, always a chance that he's gonna be able to get a crit. So, just gonna go into Gabu Tops, finish him off with the priority Aqua Chit, and that will be the game! So yeah, that will be the match for today. Thank you for watching, hope you guys enjoyed, and... I don't really have anything anything special to ramble about, but uh, I got some Poke MMO coming tomorrow and then more battles next week. Probably gonna change up the pace a little bit and post some different tier match. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So until next time, this is the Flaming Spade signing out. Peace.